did someone stay out last like for a long time last month? <laughs> 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 I too, but I was writing it. So, so hi, I'm, hi, my name is Mikko Vatanen. I come from Finland. Uh, from the Inter Center of Science, and I'm going to talk about a little bit uh, the experience and the lessons we have learned while we have been developing our data processing workflows. Oh, I have some very extreme server problem here. I try to. Yeah, so what we have learned while developing our processing system, it will be quite technical how many developers there are right here. So there are some. Some, some of, so it will be quite technical, so, but I hope you, everyone will get some, something. So a little bit uh, about CSC. Uh, so we are state-owned state uh, company, a non-profit company, and we provide a wide range of computing services for universities and also this cultural uh, organizations. Finland. And that's about it. Our Finnish other backbone network is our other physical network is big service of ours. Alright. So then there's this National Digital Library of Finland. There are some guys over here also from Finland from there. Okay. <laughs> and well, this is this collaboration project. There are many organizations involved, and this National Digital Library of Finland uh, provides uh, digital repositories access for the uh, cultural assets and also preservation services. And I'm going to talk about the preservation service right up there in the right corner, a small box over there. And kind of it's been one project and a lot of development. And it's not ready, but it, it is still in some shape. Yes. All right. I'll go through this channel quite fast. All right. And the digital preserva preservation service in this library of Finland. <coughs> uh, so we're offering this service for our partner organizations. And this service is uh, funded and administered by the Minister of Culture and Education. So it's national service, state of service. And we provide uh, long-term pres preservation, so it's more than just a big preservation. And we follow the OIS model. We started in production. Uh, in the end of 2015. So it's quite new service and products. We have been developing it for uh, three years now. Developing software and the specific support was a lot more. Uh, at the moment, our capacity is half petabytes. <coughs> and we store it on three different medias at Southern Finland. Then we have plans for dark archive and also geographical distribution of the data. And CSC, where I'm coming from, we are implementing it and providing this service. All right. So this is this is, this is uh, uh, the easiest part of the preservation service. So how we I'm going to talk about this about workflows and data processing. So this is the part I want to talk about. So uh, it's not too complicated. So the, the organization user just uploads the SIP package, package to the transfer directory. We process it in, in this uh, distinct unique workspace. And everything is done under this workspace. And then we, when validation and we get every report generated and these kind of things, we store it to page and yes, and then we give it. It's not or when it, if, uh, if the validation is not invalid, we just report back to user and keep the data. We don't so we never remove any kind of intermediate data until it is 
secure store until we have past the fifty percent threshold that we have few copies of the data all the time. This is basically it. Uh, well, uh, about this workspace, it's kind of thing we have been. Uh, I'm going to talk a little about more about this idea. But this this kind of the direct directory structure we are working with. It's common for all, all our like tasks. This workflow tasks we are using. So it provides this common structure, and every task knows where there are some where the files are going to be found. And the yellow ones are for the data we process. And the green boxes are for reports, logs, and these kind of things. And the green ones have, every green report have, have their like, predefined name. So these green, these reports and logs, they also represent the state of the workflow. I talk a little more about this. This, this is the structure how we store it and how we, where we are processing the data. It's, it's simple. And this is, this is uh, kind of uh, examples of the workflows, how they are pulled up. <coughs> there are some dependencies and I talk more about this also. So the blue ones are the executing some tasks and green ones are like done and yellow ones are pending. There are some parallel processing going on there. See, this kind of and it's kind of crap way. And this is how it looks there are, uh, in reality. This, this is a screenshot from our production service. So there are some failing tasks and uh, some running tasks, some pending tasks. The finished ones didn't fit into the screen. There are quite many, 2,000 pending and just a few running right now. There are some problems with the memory. So this would be your like, nightmare Friday. <laughs> Oh, oh my, this is the way. But actually, if we just, uh, we, our, our solution, we have just checked this. The reports, what the error message in, and we say that, all right, it's not nothing like permanent error, so we can continue on Monday. But this is real life, this normal use case. There are some, you, there are some cases that you get some fail, task, task failing, and the system will uh, handle it automatically. We have really much, because we're integrating many uh, like organization systems, like automated transfer of these packages. So we need to have also kind of automated way of handling these errors. And yes. So I'll talk about the real reliability and the So what is reliable workflow? It's <laughs> it is some, something that's simple and easy to understand. I think this, this is the simplest case I could figure out. We just set the world. Should we succeed? No. Try again. <laughs> then we try again. Then we try again. And this is an, uh, There are some, uh, uh, <coughs> some kind of terms for mathematics and computer science, which have been, uh, we have been trying a few things out. And these have been kind of, kind of a race, raising up, a race up to us. Because they seem to be kind of key terms for the processing. So this is deterministic. So any algorithm or task which with even classical input will always produce the same output. And in important, it's this uh, operation which uh, produces the same output and does not modify the input set of data. This is quite common uh, for example if you have been using new make developers have been using. You just create new files and never delete any files. And you never modify the intermediate results you have. So you always create new files and you kind of only add to the data that you are having. And this this kind of helps helps with your this error handling. If you have some some any temporal error, the task fails for any reason. You just run the task again because you're only creating like new file for the next result, and if the next result doesn't exist, you just try to create, create it. Again. It's really simple. It's and I, I like simple things. This this big thing. Uh, the most difficult thing for me is to make uh, things simple. 
make difficult things simple. And this is kind of how, how we have been solving these problems. So, this is, this is about the reliability. This is one base, basic idea. So, what's efficient workflow? Well, we distribute it over <coughs> several holes. Uh, we run in parallel inside one host. And that's about it. Everyone does that. There are some uh, some things we have we have some quite long workflows that they take some time. So when this workflows at some point any point they might this workflow might, might fail. And we don't really want to start it all over again, this workflow. So we store the intermediate results in, in all tasks we have are running. So this is this is kind of the way we can execute only the parts of the workflow which which are not ready yet. So if the result doesn't exist, we run the end part of the workflow. It's kind of that simple. And this is these are the basic ideas. Yeah. So we have we have uh, we have tried some tools for how to implement these ideas and how to implement this. We're using Python. It's nice and easy language. Uh, Cluster App has provides us some some scalability for our file system. We're using shared file system for processing. And since Luigi, this is uh, kind of the workflow engine. What we're using for the workflow. Uh, tool for developing this workflow with. And it's it's almost like a new made if you have used the command, so it's kind of distributed, but you know, not quite tightly. But and of course we have we are integrating a lot of these open source components together and we are using Python to integrate everything together and it's a big file of <coughs> big file of spaghetti. <laughs> All right. So this is some this is some uh, comparison to some others. There's some features that are kind of distinct to uh, these components of this system. So we are designing our system as uh, dedicated small pieces like Unix Unix ideology that every component has their own single uh, functionality and do it well. So for the workflow, we're using one programming language, not any proprietary discrete description languages, we use only Python for the workflow, describing the workflow, describing our jobs, integrating stuff with Python. And this is a big thing, the workflows can run standalone and with central uh, scheduler. This is the uh, main thing for the testing. We can test our workflows without any external service. So we can make unit testing for these workflows. For the whole workflow we can unit testing. Uh, which makes our development cycle very fast. It's, unit tests are always faster. And uh, one thing is that the task dependencies, what are the dependent tasks, required tasks before, they are described in the tasks itself. Uh, this is kind of uh, one thing was different. And also what is kind of we have been liking is that we store the data and workflow together. So we have the data files, which are, like I showed you in the workspace, there are these files, these yellow ones, which are the files, and then there are these log files and reports that are kind of the state of the workflow, which represent the state. So it's, uh, there, there, there's no, there's so little infrastructure needed, no database server or anything. It's really simple. Just Keep, keep it simple. All right. Now this is about the uh, scheduler and these workers kind of. It has a this central scheduler that uh, that can get uh, kind of builds the dependency tree and manages the execution order in the distributed environment. And then we there's no triggering mechanism in this. Uh, which is workflow system, so we just run the jobs as run jobs. So we trigger the jobs on every host, and the central scheduler 
takes care of that. There's no duplicate uh, jobs running. So it means that the job is not running on separate servers. So it's kind of simple task for the scheduler. It doesn't, the scheduler does not start the jobs. The workers start the jobs, but they ask permission from the scheduler if they can work. It's kind of asking permission, and the workers itself know how to execute the whole workflow. So it's really easy because if you, if you want to test the worker one workflow on the worker one, we just use the internal scheduler at the worker one, and we can test it on single host. If you want to test like distributed uh, workflows, we use the central scheduler, and then there's some uh, interaction and some login, and this kind of thing happen over there. So that's yeah. This is how the tasks look like. This is called that. They are really simple. You have class, which is our uh, great example. There's requires uh, method. It uh, describes what tasks must be executed before this task can be continued. Then there's output. This output uh, describes where this task stores its result. This is the result where it stores. And the run run method contains the beef and it's just the way everything there and write it. This is interesting because you can you can kind of uh, throw exception anywhere in there in the run uh, run method and it will it will not write the uh, it will not write the output file yet. That's kind of it's kind of hidden this uh, Transactionality is hidden inside this uh, local target class or this target class. They have this atomic atomic transactions kind of way. It's you can study it more if you want. Uh, this is a real life task. It's a bit small, but it's not that much longer. If you can see anything about it. it's uh, how we decompress uh, the transferred zip file. That's about it. Of course, there's kind of the real extracting, decompressing happens in some other function which we can test separately outside the workflow. So we are in the code kind of splitting them. This is kind of the idea model, this theoretical uh, model of how it works. This workflow. Again, so we have these yellow data files and the green ones are the local files which present the state. And, uh, Kind of, uh, we have the one just like this zip file. We get some compressed file. We get in there. We don't know really. We don't know what's inside there. So we had to come up with the solution that we actually we store the storing workflow state in this work files, and we process this this data. We process it as kind of the task side effect, which is usually not a quite popular idea in programming, functional programming, but side effect we're using. And we have been testing it on distributed file system and distributed system, and it's working good. It's no problem. And this kind of the way there's the blue master, the big compressive file, it produces an output, it's, we store it as premise event, and then the validation of digital object, objects requires that it has been extracted, decompressed them. Then the validation creates another report and the thing goes on, the machine goes on. This kind of simple idea. There are some cases we have to uh, kind of trans transmit the workflow normal state. So uh, we have additional tasks like if the validation task writes this report, then this run next workflow or this dispatcher task, it kind of reads the report and decides what, what task to uh, run next. So in the run statement, you can, if you're not, if you're not Python, you can yield, yield the next task in the run statement, and it will run the next task. But in, uh, in this kind of this idea, uh, in, in every task, every, uh, we should always expect that uh, any task can be run safely anytime, anywhere. This is the idea for every task that whenever you run the task, whether it has its requirements or where it must be safe always. And if it has its requirements done, it will continue. If there's not a required environment or anything, it will just stop. 
that's the kind of idea that every class is safe to execute. All right. Uh, then we have some uh, needs for running tasks on dedicated servers. We have validation servers, we have page servers, we have different kind of posts we are using. And we have to transfer the workflow state to from one host to another host. So we're again using log files for tra transferring the state information between these hosts. So we on validation server we create type file, some archive file, and write the log file. The type is really again a side effect the data over there. And then there is this uh, interesting part which is just kind of implementation, implementation detail that there is this external task class that can have pending state and it will wait until it will wait until there is this log file and when the log file exists it has permission to continue. And then we store the aim and the store aid task gets the data side effect of it just reads it the data stores it. So it's kind of this kind of uh, simplifying this complex I or at least trying to simplify and it's pretty simple for me. <laughs> trying to simplify and make this kind of simple infrastructure for all. Yeah. Yeah. And also the efficiency how to scale this scale this task to because this Luigi uh, tool we're using it really does not Itself by itself, it does not distribute the task or the, any of the process, it doesn't handle the distribution. It just handles that there are, at any time, there are no two instances of the same task running all day, like the duplicate task are running. If you have different input parameters, then the, the task can run parallel. But if they have the same input parameters, you really don't need to run this unit, run all the one instance. And this Luigi scheduler takes care of, there are no two instances. So we just trigger these workflows on each host with run, and then we have this very simple distribution algorithm. We just use uh, the module of the index for the workspace, and we well, by this module we select the workspace process. So if there are two hosts, we use the workspace index 2, module 2, it gives 0, 1, and with the zero one we select that okay this goes to this host and the one other one goes to, to the other host. So this is kind of the uh, scaling how we are distributing their jobs. And this kind of this selection pattern, selection algorithm reduces the duplicate tasks these cron jobs are uh, triggering or adding to the central scheduler. So it's, it's just for having less load on the scheduler and keeping up simple. Uh, two minutes now. There's some redundancy on this system. When when one workspace or SIP gets processed and done, we just remove it. So the order of the workspace change and then the uh, host will select a different set of workspaces to work with. So it's kind of redundant system already even we don't have redundant running the same uh, workspace on uh, different hosts. Uh, and while well, bottlenecks are really, really now in the shared file systems, we have to do some tuning on them. And also data storage, we have to do some tuning over there. This kind of thing. I, uh, I think it's quite, quite close. This is our team. I really have to thank everyone <laughs> of our team. It's not, not my, my own work. We have a lot of uh, great great people who are working and also we this is not the whole all people who are working. We have kind of the in-house IT management uh, hardware service and everything else. We have a lot of people behind us also. Alright, I think that's everything I have today. And you'll find more at CSC.fi and if you search for CS, CSC and digital preservation you will find us. And I think about it. And if you want to ask, please come and ask.